Welcome everybody to the Planning and Development Committee meeting of October the 5th. We, the Benalla Rural City Council, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and to the elders from other communities who may be here today. Uh, do we have any apologies? Councillor Burke. Move, Councillor King, Councillor Davis, all those in favour? It's carried. <coughs> Confirmation of the minutes of the last meeting. So I'd like to move a quick record, Councillor King, Councillor Hearn, all those in favour? Uh, this committee meeting is conducted in accordance with the Local Government Act of 2020 and the Benalla Rural City Governance Rules of 2020. The meeting is recorded and live streamed via our video uh, YouTube channel. Behaviour at the meeting <coughs> meetings is expected to be exemplary. Um, disclosure of conflict of interest in accordance with the Local Government Act of 2020. A councillor must declare any conflict of interest pursuant to Section 130 of the Act in any items of this agenda. <clears throat> um, an item that an item indicated on the agenda of council must with a conflict of interest must indicate that clearly by stating the item for which they have a conflict of interest with the interest of the conflict is general or material and the circumstances that give rise to the <coughs> conflict of interest. Does anyone have a conflict of interest in the agenda? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Agenda item number one, a planning application for multi-lot subdivision, 33 lots, and the removal of native vegetation and the creation of an easement, Burke Drive, Benalla. Welcome, Joel. Thank you, Chair. I present a planning application to subdivide land into 33 lots, the removal of native vegetation and to create an easement at lot two, Burke Drive, Benalla. The land is located in between the north and south extensions of Burke Drive, a two-lot subdivision excising the existing dwelling at 55 Crush Avenue from the balance of the land has recently been issued title. The land is re generally rectangular in shape with the, with the exception of the area to the southeast of the site containing the excised dwelling and has an overall area of 2.389 hectares. The 33 lot subdivision will be constructed in, it, in its entirety in one stage. Vehicle extension connections will be provided to the north and south connecting Burke Drive and to the west of the site connecting this land to stage three of Livingston Estate. A court bowl will be provided within the west portion of the site and this court bowl will be provided with a pedestrian access linking with Stapleton Court to the north of the site. Lot sizes within the subdivision will range from 315 square metres to 1,008 square metres in area. The tree removal involves the removal of two native trees that are classified as being small trees within the south portion of the site. The creation of an easement involves a drainage easement from the retention basin on either court to the south through proposed lot 28. It is proposed to drain the subject site to an enlarged retention basin in Stapleton Court. The proposal was advertised and no objections were received and all referral authorities advised of no objection to the proposal subject to conditions. The proposal is considered to comply with the requirements of Clause 56 of the Benalla Planning Scheme and provides for a subdivision layout in keeping with the characteristics of the general residential zone. The recommendation is on pages 15 to 27 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Are there any questions of Joel? Councillor Ganaretney. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> thanks, Joel. A very good report, and thanks for presenting the information in a very summary format, especially the mix of the number of lots. Uh, the question I have is the plan for open <coughs> space. Um, we discussed this that there's no open space provided it's with the 5% deposit, but uh, we know that there's a future subdivision that's providing closer to this with an open space. And could you please speak to that plan a bit? Yeah, so, so the land to the north of the site was issued a planning permit uh, earlier in the year, or the middle of the year, uh, for an 80-odd 80 80 lot subdivision. Uh, that has three areas of uh, large areas of open space, uh, which are all in interconnected with footpaths and whatnot. Uh, 
the, the five percent requested from the subdivision goes into a into a fund that uh, can provide for the upgrade and maintenance of such parks in future. Thank you. Are there any other questions, Councillor King? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Joel, just with regards to the um, the water basin on Iver Street, there, I'm assuming that this um, state may connect into that basin. The Iver Street is to the south of the site, yep. and the, the only connection that that has with this site is that there's an overlap, overflow from that basin through the site. Yep. This this site actually drains to the basin in Stapleton Court to the north, okay. uh, which has been enlarged to take more water. Okay. Um, and just a follow-up question, if I may, Mr. Chair, with regards to the basin, particularly this one in Island Street that's sent smack bang in the middle of the, these states, what safety requirements are in place for those when they're full? Because I did drive through the estate the other day and like a little fence, I wouldn't think you jump that easily. Um, yeah. yeah. Generally, they're fenced, uh, but there's nothing further that we generally provide to the safety of animals. So, so we require fencing. Uh, that, that can be higher uh, if requested, but yeah, given that this has already been approved, yeah, it's difficult to retro, yeah, retrospectively. Do. Something to consideration. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Joel. Are there any other questions? Councillor Davis. Um, Joel, um, water concerns me in that area. Um, do I recall you saying that the engineer or the um, engineer working on one subdivision is also working on the, the, the connecting subdivision, so <laughs> he'll appreciate the water needs to keep moving? Yes, yes. So, so, so the, the uh, developer working on this or the engineer working on this also worked on the approval for Burke Drive, uh, all of the Livingston Estate, and is also uh, working with the developers on the land to the west. You're comfortable with that, but uh, it means that they've got a better overall take of what's happening on the land. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Um, did I hear you correctly when you said that there was a connection between through um, what's the name of that one? Ambridge Street through. Oh, it's not. It's the court through to Stapleton Court. Is it a pedestrian access? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So that whole area is going to interconnect. In some ways, yeah. So it? the court bowl uh, <coughs> travels north through to a, a what will be a footpath through to the court bowl and stuff on the court. Oh, okay, thank you, Councillor Davis. Thank you, um, John. And I only read it last night, but um, the water tanks is that a, a, a new idea to yours in the subdivisions? Is that or is that something we're going to enforce from now on? That they, I know they should carry keep their water on their own property for a long <coughs> time, but. Well, I've never seen where we put water tanks like the other subdivisions so as much as we are here. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've been doing it for the last, oh, I would say, seven subdivisions that we've improved. Yeah. So, so it's been fairly common in the last year and a half. Um, so, yeah, that, that's something that we'll be enforcing in future. Good. Uh, are there any other questions? Councillor Davis? John, on a personal note, um, can you give us some idea of, because we, we're always looking at councillors' time and so forth. What sort of time frame would it take from when when the, this a permit like this is put in to present it to us <coughs> tonight? Like, I'd just like to know officers' hours that you have to put into something like this. Yeah, the, the hours are difficult. The the, uh, the time frame for a planning application like this to get to council days wise will be about three to three and a half months, uh, possibly longer. Um, I would go as far to say that uh, hours worked, you'd be putting in at least two weeks full time. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a lot of time. Thanks. Are there any other questions? I have. Yeah. Oh. I was going to move the recommendation. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, just have one just concerning um, drainage, which I know is it's a terribly flat, swampy area over there. <clears throat> And thank you very much for this large map. It gives everyone a much yeah. better idea of the whole 
three or four subdivisions over there. So the water will drain from the south to the north, basically. So the, the first subdivision in Livingston will be caught in that the sub in the basin that's there now. As I've caught, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Overflow from that will go through this current one. Through the Stapleton Court. Through to Stapleton Court. Yeah. And then collected in the next Into basin the stage, at Stapleton yeah. Court. Yes. And yes. where does it go from there? From Stapleton Court, there's another basin in the north, uh, in the subdivision to the north of the site. Uh, I don't have that. In this. Yes, in that <coughs> northern section. This one here. Yes. <coughs> that will flow where does through, it go from here? Uh, to. Thank you. Is that a basin name? To reserve number one. Oh, yeah, right. Number one. And then, and then from there, uh, hopefully further west when they when they start to the <coughs> that subdivision. And then it will run into the uh, Then it will run towards the channel, the main west west main drain. Right. Yeah. And you're confident that that will drain the water away? I, uh, based on engineers' advice, yes. Yeah. Yep. Are there any other questions? Not. Uh, Councillor King, move it. Councillor yep. Davis, second. So I can speak, Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Joel, uh, great report, and um, it, it's a yeah, great insight into into um, what's happening over in that space. It's sort of the final piece of the jigsaw over there in uh, in that big development, which has been happening now for for some time. So it's great to. To see, and, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's it's wonderful to see developers investing confidently in Vanilla by coming in and developing estates and allowing our community to grow. So I think this is just another example of our community on the move and it's great for Vanilla and um, let's hope it all comes together efficiently and effectively and we sell the blocks and we get more people living here and, and um, doing their part. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor King. Councillor Davis. Thank you. Um, while I have reservations about uh, removing the water, I think my questions have been answered tonight. Um, I think it's wonderful going on from what Councillor King said. Um, it's We talk about low-cost housing and the way the government's going at the moment, um, and I can see that these will be reasonably priced blocks for young people and old people, but um, it just gives us some extra stock that other towns in Victoria haven't got. So... The stock of houses that we're producing at the moment that people are coming to us with and subdivisions is a credit to us, or not credit to us, credit to the subdividers. They've got the confidence to come to Manella to do these sort of works because they obviously cost a lot of money. So they've, they've got faith in Manella and um, it's going to it will make Manella grow. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Councillor Davis. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for the recommendation? Okay, all those in favour? Carried. Thank you. Uh, item number two, planning permit application <coughs> P0102-22 to construct horse stables and a horse walker at 5835 Midland Highway, Banana. <coughs> uh, we have a couple of speakers on this item. The first speaker is Colin Dezaley. Colin, would you like to come forward? You have three minutes. Thank you. Three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, fellow council, councillors. A couple, I've got a few points that I'd like to make. I hope it doesn't go over to three minutes. Number one, I don't disagree with what they're doing. I actually agree with it, but it's the long term effects that things have. And I'd just like to make a few points regarding that. And up front, I've got effluent rainwater to be sent where? <coughs> I do understand the race track has an effluent line that goes directly to the sewage farm. It's a small one, very small one. So when there's additional stuff, effluent to be handled can only be done through something like a rising main. A rising main, not sure, doesn't. There's no mention of it. It's got to be placed somewhere. Rising mains have got to have a vent. With that vent comes smells and odors. And um, the next one I'd like to 
make a comment about existing <coughs> between Racecourse Road and the existing stables. There's a current embankment, which if there is any existing flows before the extension, that embankment holds the product back and is directed more toward a dam or swim for the horses. These stables, when they reckon, that will be removed, I believe. Otherwise, it's got to go up and rise. And, um, with those flows, they've got to be handled and shot somewhere. There are gutters that lead to dams and all the rest of it, but there's also interaction between council gutters and Racecourse Road, which is, I might add, very minimal. They do not flow in any particular direction. They try very hard to run water uphill. Uh, it's very useless. The buffer zone, on the drawing, the buffer zone between Racecourse Road, <coughs> can't see clearly on the drawing that it's been provided. Um, but I believe the measurement, the dimension is on the narrow or the wider part instead of the narrow part, <coughs> which I'm not sure how that can be clarified. Um, horse stables being set back nine metres, what they call offset, buffer zone. Most things in Racecourse Road in that area would be in excess of nine metres at some point. I would like something clarified regarding that. Um, if you were going to build a house in Racecourse Road, I believe they would want a greater offset. What would be the difference between a house and stables, I don't know. Gravel. They mentioned gravel. Um, gravel is nominated as a, a stone and a mud. There's different types of products. <coughs> there is, was mentioned uh, earlier. Colin, you, have you nearly finished or would you like an extension? Yeah, nearly finished. Which I'm Thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Davis. All those in favour? Continue on, Colin. I'm sorry. No, you're here, fine. I'm nearly done. Oh, gravel, in my opinion, gravel is a mixture of gravel and mud, and it combines and binds together and makes a reasonable good surface, which your roadways are around the Shire. You can put aggregate on it, that's nominated as aggregate, or quarry dust, that's nominated as quarry dust, it's not gravel. Dust. When dust um, happens, it can be handled by water carts and that sort of thing. But the main purpose of the situation is when the meeting's finished, that's when all the dust, everybody's going about their business, everyone's clearing out off the site, the employees are busy tidying up and tying loose ends together. That's when the dust happens. The dust also happens when in the evening the wind is reduced the air temperature drops, smells drop, dust drops, and that lingers through the housing. Cladding, mentioned, I don't believe it mentions anything in regard to colour or <coughs> And lighting, that's... Um, final situation here, it's a horse area. We currently have horses behind us, beside us, and the race horse. The race course are governed by, because it's a business, EPA in various situations, but there are other areas that the, they no doubt have permits for horses, but nothing gets done. And it is very, very possible what might happen in this regard is that the smells from the horses or the urine or whatever could be mistaken by other ones when a business is trying to do the right thing and to comply, which they have to, uh, could get mixed up with other ones in the area. That's about all I can say. Um, yeah, that's it. <coughs> Thank you, Colin. Would you be happy to answer any questions from the council? Yeah. I'm... Are there any questions of Colin? Colin, you you you've obviously lived in the area for a fair while. Yeah. Um. I'm just going to ask, do you, do you, so you said there's horses behind you and horses at the side of you and, of course, the race course. Um, though, are you saying that the people behind you aren't doing the right things with their horses? 
I'm saying I'm saying that a private person can have <coughs> various numbers of horses uh, that is not controlled by the council. Some properties buy bigger acreage so the kids can have horses. Some people buy property to house horses. Um, when those people that acquire houses or and they want to keep horses, either on adjustment or whatever the case, I don't know the understanding as to where the council fits into that situation. But there is currently a fluent going into Racecourse Road, other than mm. well, from the racetrack. The gutters in Racecourse Road, I'll just reiterate again, are very, very bad. When you have culverts that are higher than the base of the gutter, the water is stagnant. I think I mentioned it to Jappy over there the other day and they actually drove past and they viewed it in full strength. Now, any effluent gets mixed with the water and the odour, there is a problem there. And I've been there quite a number of years and the gutters need work. Uh, Councillor Hearn again and then Councillor Davis. Um, so, Colin, um, your problem is, as it is at the moment, not what the future is to bring. You're having problems um, at the moment where you're, and you think this may enhance it or may not enhance it or? It adds to a complication. When I say a complication, is that Uh, the complication would be that you don't necessarily blame the right people for creating the smells. Now, I do, I mentioned earlier about a rising main. Rising mains, in this case, will be an issue because depending upon where it's placed, you don't want to place it at the opposite end of where it's got to go to. So it's going to have to be somewhere in the area of those stables as a hydraulic situation to be approached. Um, yeah. And, and the race course are governed by EPA, you said. So well, where your other people are. They operate, they operate, yeah, from EPA rules or <coughs> to control them. Something else I would like to ask you again. In the big picture of things, where does the council. Colin, sit I'm sorry, you, you can't ask. I can't ask. I'm sorry, not, well, not, not in this format. Well, uh, all right, if I can just make a statement. You, you can put a question in writing. Right. It's just, it's referred to through this document disregarding what subject you're on. It's very easy for the council to put a, it's governed by EPA, Gold and Murray Water Catchment. Now, does that mean, I've got to ask a question, I suppose, to do that. Well, it's a good excuse. So an excuse is not a question, so I can leave it at that. Councillor Davis, did you have a question of Colin? Thank you, Cole. You, you've lived over in that area for a long time now. Um, this is obviously going to be a training facility. Now, there's a training facility in there now where, where people bring their trucks and that in the morning. Um, and you know, in the horse, the horse industry does the touristly start early because they have to start early. Um, do you have any problems with what's going on there at the moment? No, you don't. A lot of people have. <coughs> I don't criticise business. Well, I try hard not to criticise business, but I'm more inclined to look outside the square mm. in the long term. And the long term, it's one thing in the outset to have a gravel surface. Have drainage. Drainage, in my opinion, on around the racecourse area is non-existent. So, who maintains what is proposed here today in three years' time? My follow-up question. Um, and I can't answer that. <laughs> I'd like to, but um, my follow-up question is: obviously, you've looked through the, the conditions and so forth. Um, are you comfortable with the um, with the amount of vegetation and and what the, and the screening that'll be along the road there? Because um... currently on the 
to the what is there existing at the moment, I am, yes. Yeah. But if you bring all that forward, it needs to, I would say, quadruple. Mm. There will be its new cladding. I mentioned the cladding earlier. Um, you bring that down close to the racecourse road, there's reflection. Um, lighting. Uh, we're offset off the road quite a quite a amount, but there are other, other people which I understood we're going to be here tonight, but yeah, well, that's human nature. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Colin, for coming and um, letting us share your concerns with us. But, um, so I'm just wondering, because I noticed when I go down that road, um, there's been, it's really, um, there's been an uptake of better homes. It's just looking better from what it used to five or ten years ago, I think, that rest calls around more residential areas, bigger lots and things. So are you saying um, if we could get all the drainage around the race course, both from the Midland Highway and down race course road, that that would kind of solve the problem, the, or the concerns rather than the problem that you have well, at the moment? I think what the race course is proposing here, what they are proposing, any drainage is going to be integral to their property. Mm -hmm. What I'm also saying is that currently the gutters in race course road are integrating currently in con conjunction with the race course, flow in and out of the dam, and if it, the dam's full, it flows out. <coughs> if the dam's empty, it flows in. So that's been a natural thing that's been developed <coughs> a lot of bloody years. But stagnant water now, just to upgrade the gutters is a big thing. There's large trees that grow in the gutter. You're not supposed to buy council information some years ago. You're not supposed to drain the water toward the Midland Highway. It's got to go the other direction. So that encumbers. There's trees on both sides of the road that are placed directly while they're grown in the gutter. And the gutter comes along to a tree and stops. Right? Mm -hmm. And with regulations the way they are about removing trees and so forth, it's not likely to happen. And what you do about it, Apart from drilling a hole through the tree, I don't know. So. Mm. Okay, thanks. Uh, are there any other questions for Colin? Thank you very much, Colin. Thank you. <clears throat> the next speaker is uh, Cameron Symes. Welcome, Cameron. You know the drill by now, you have three minutes. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, councillors. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity just to highlight a few things about. Um, the development and and what it means to Benalla and, and the community. We um we recently had a, a rent plan done study on on what economic benefits this would have for the town. Um, the trainer that will uh, take up an agreement for fifteen years to start with for this uh, for the stables, the five plus five plus five will uh, have nine full time staff, and the flow on effect for that is as further five jobs. Um, and through <coughs> employment spending, uh, the local economy is estimated to grow up by 3.1 million just for this project. So it's um, it's a great addition to to our town. Um, obviously, uh, we've had a, a couple of objections, and I just want to highlight the the drainage and and the plan for this. Um, all water will be harvested on site uh, and, and reused and any overflow will go into our internal drainage system that runs to the north down towards the Benalla Equestrian Centre which there's an internal drainage system in there that, that we want to capture all the water and reuse because we know water is expensive. Um, in terms of effluent water and so forth um, all the drains and the horse wash will have a triple interceptor and captured and will go into um, a legal point of discharge which is which is on course and then as we know, it goes over to um, the, the banana sewage. So um, in terms of uh, the, the dust that has been mentioned, um, Banana Racing Club obviously prides itself on um, the, the site and the presentation and the maintenance of it. And that is a general maintenance um, issue that um, as an asset maintenance that will be maintained at all times, um, along with the... Uh, the quality and the cleanliness of, of the site. So um, I don't see that to be of, of any concern. Um, the race club has been here since 1860 um, and it's not going anywhere in a hurry. So um, 
we're only looking to move onwards and upwards. And we see this as a, as the greatest asset to the, to the town and, and to racing and the sport in itself. So um, that's sort of all um, I wanted to address. If there's any questions, I'll take those. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any questions? Councillor O'Brien, then Councillor King. Okay. Thanks, Cam, for coming along and um, uh, sharing all of that information with us. Um, so when you say the water's going to be harvested from site, the used water, is that what you use for watering the paddocks and things like that? And I don't know. The, grass green, the grassy area is green? <laughs> <laughs> Except in that, it's raining, yeah. Um, are you talking in the city, the, well, uh, the stable itself or well, what we I use for water? Well, I just understood that you said that the drainage is harvested on site. So, yeah, so any, it, that's just... Yep. Any water that's used within that new uh, precinct, yes, yes, we'll, we'll go into um, two uh, 45,000 litre water tanks mm -hmm. and then that'll be reused to for the facilities itself. Mm -hmm. And then any overflow will go into our irrigation dam that waters our lawn. Mm -hmm. Yep, and obviously we have uh, a, water, <coughs> a water cart that um, suppresses all mm -hmm. the sand and dust, and which we do on a regular basis, on a daily basis, we water our sand track for the dust suppression. Mm -hmm. So it's something common to us. We, we know that dust is an issue um, and we put in an irrigation system on our sand track to, to stop that. But we've also got a water cart that we have to do for our, for our roads around the area that we uh, use for dust suppression. So it'll go into our um, irrigation dam, so therefore we don't have to... We've only got a limited water on mm. um, and we know town water is expensive and uh, we prefer not to use town water. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you. Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Thanks, Cam, um, yeah, for that, for that insight. Um, can you just explain, so these stables are just going to be primarily used for trainers and, and you know, on the day, race days to, to house horses? Like, yep, it's a bit of a run down on it. Yeah, so um, we've been able to, to Troy Corson has, has signed an agreement to uh, pending application of the planning um, to house uh, 20 horses on site. Um, he lives in Lurgy, he's bought a farm in Lurgy, he has a training facility at Flemington, which is the headquarters of racing as well as Geelong. Um, his future is, is this way, he's coming this way. Uh, Geelong will eventually close down and he'll head this way. Uh, it was Benalla or Wangaratta for where he would train, you know, we know Lurgy's in, in the middle, um, but he, he chose Benalla, so that's another another great asset to us. So um, yeah, he, he'll be training out of there and they'll be used for training on, on a daily basis. Um, and at the moment, they're currently um, bringing in horses from Lurg on a daily basis and, and floating them in. So obviously on site, less traffic, less trucks running in, in and out. Yeah, great. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Councillor Hearn. Thanks, Cam. Um, just curious. Um, I've been with horses all my life. So I understand this facility will be spotless in the contract that you have are uh, about to sign with if this is passed. Um, do you have a clause in there <coughs> that you got that the race club actually govern the tidiness of it, make sure that it's spick and span and Absolutely. It, it, yeah, it, 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 it is. Um, obviously, with the error comments, you, you, you've been to the races, you were at the races um, and a couple of others were at the races last week and you, you see how far the, the race come has, has come and our presentation there is absolutely it is. Um, you know, we've, we've obviously, we've all seen the fence and um, the upgrades we've done out there and once again, we pride ourselves on awareness and tidiness and yes, it is in the contract. Fantastic. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you. Um, so, Cam, I just thought you were talking about the economic impact and everything, yep. which is great, which is great to hear from Vanilla. So, um, if um, the racing industry in Benalla is, is to grow, does that mean that racing Victoria <coughs> will put more money into Victor uh, into Benalla's race course so that those upgrades can keep getting better? A absolutely. This has nothing to do with the application, yeah. I know, but uh, I'm just kind of curious about that. Absolutely. So to give everyone a bit of a, a background, um, Racing Victoria has 20 training centres in Victoria. There's 54 uh, professional um, clubs. Um, uh, part of those 20 um, training centres, uh, Benalla is one of those. There's seven major ones. So, therefore, this further enhances Benalla Racing Club to become a larger training centre. Therefore, there will be more investment in upgrading the facilities. So, 
uh, gradient of sand tracks and training tracks and um, horse type stalls, race dates, um, mounting yards and um, general racing activity. So yeah, absolutely, it's uh, it's a great, it will be a great asset for the Benalla Racing Club and the future of racing in Benalla. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thanks for coming along, Kim. Uh, just certainly across your subjects. Um, Colin just mentioned before about um, about lighting, like offside lighting, um, which could be a, a distraction or a concern. Um, would the lighting be contained to the area? Absolutely. Yep. Thanks. Councillor King. Yeah. Thanks, Mr Chair. Just one more, uh, please, Cam. Um, it was mentioned before, so Colin mentioned about um, the risk of water runoff into the um, into the race course road, into the gutters there, and and what that could mean. Um, is there uh, is is the race club sort of aware of that, conscious of that, and, and would you undertake your own regular testing of, of water that might be sitting in the drain just to make sure it's not that's not happening? <laughs> oh, is it contaminated? In contamination, yeah. Um, well, well, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Our plan with this project is to change the levels and redirect the water so that we can catch it all. Okay. So at, at the moment, there's a, you would say, a rooftop where the air is and half of it generally runs off to the south to, to Racecourse Road and the other half runs north and sort of sits in a bit of a hole and then goes into our system. So we want to cor correct that and capture all the water so that it stays within our facility, yeah. harvest as much as we can. Yeah. So you would think there'd be... Really, really no risk of contamination into the no risk from this the race was right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, mate. <coughs> Councillor Davis. Thank you, um, Cam. The mayor and I were having a bit of discussion, robust discussion, before the meeting about the walker. Now, is, is the walker a, a, a noisy piece of equipment or no? No, it's run on two forty power. So you don't have a generator. No, no. So a golf cart would be louder than a petrol golf cart. Thank you. Because that, that was a concern that was raised with me. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions of Cameron? No. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Cameron. Thank you. <coughs> okay, over to you, Joel. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. I present a planning application to construct horse stables and a horse walker at 5835 Midland Highway, Benalla. The subject site is located on the northeast corner of Millen Highway and Racecourse Road and has an overall site area of 71.65 hectares. The land contains the existing vanilla racecourse environments, including a racetrack with associated buildings and park, car parking areas. To the northwest and west of the site are the Pony Club facilities and an oval. The proposed buildings will be located within the southern portion of the land towards Racecourse Road and to the south of the existing horse stalls. The horse stables will be set back nine metres from the south boundary to Racecourse Road. The stables will provide for 20 horse boxes, a tackle room, feed room, tea room, and two toilets, and will have dimensions of 16 metres wide by 52 metres long, with an overall area of 832 metres squared. A hard stand area will be provided to the west of the horse stables, constructed from hard stand rock, uh, from crushed rock, to provide for vehicle parking. The horse walker will be located to the east of the horse stables and will be set back 11.25 metres from the south boundary. The horse walker will be generally round with an internal radius of 5.3 metres and with uh, taking up an overall area of about 334 square metres. The proposal was advertised and four objections were received uh, and yet uh, objections have been summarised within the report. The objectors generally raise concerns with regards <coughs> to effluent and stormwater runoff into Racecourse Road, amenity impact with regards to dust in the car park, uh, smell from vermin uh, from the horse stable use, and noise emissions from vehicles using the car, car parking area. The proposal has been referred to the Cash and Management Authority, who would vote advise of no objection to the proposal sub subject to conditions. And subject to conditions relating to management of waste from the facility and uh, the control of dust from the car park, it is considered that the use will not cause unreasonable amenity impacts to the surrounds. 
Effluent disposal will be connected to the existing reticulated sewer system and stormwater will be reused where necessary from the site's irrigation dam to the north of the buildings and works. The recommendation is on pages 37 to 40 of the report for your consideration. Do we have any questions for Joel, Councillor Hearn? Thank you, Mr Chair, through you. Joel, um, could you please tell me what the offset, standard offset for Racecourse Road is, please? Uh, there's no requirement for an offset to to Racecourse Road as a as a standard. That that's generally reflected um, in residential provisions zone. Uh, we we will generally take into account the characteristics of the neighbourhood when when uh, assessing these things. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, well, I've got a few. If you want me to continue, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> um, Joel, is there any um, idea of the colour of the cladding? Has that actually been? Uh, it's it's not proposed. It's understood that the, the actual structure is an open structure that sits over the horse boxes. So, so there will not be cladding on the side. Sides no. of the structure. So the end that is actually facing the road is that going to be cladding, or is that brick? Or uh, cladding is not shown on the plans. And so a colour. So, so therefore there'd be no colour on the side because it's not clad. Mm -hmm. okay. um, my other question was: Is and this you may have to um, take on notice, or I do notice that our manager for assets and infrastructure is close at hand. Um, is there any proposed maintenance for those gutters set into our future, um, maybe our financial, long-term financial plan or anything like that in Racecourse Road? We'll have to defer to someone else for that. <coughs> Josh, take that on notice. Uh, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Joel, it was mentioned before around the... Um, the sewerage of, of extra yeah, runoff, is, is that um, in this application, in your assessment, up to code, up to size, up to standard based on this additional Is this works? for F1 yes. disposal? Yeah. Uh, that, that is a matter for North East Water, so it doesn't come into the uh, scope of this decision. And just to follow up from that, if, would they notify council or would they notify you? If there was a concern with regards to that, or is that something that they would be directly with the race club there? Directly with the race club. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, so, Joel, I don't know whether it's got anything to do with this um, application, but are you aware of whether or not the EPA do regular testing if, if, the, if some people close by that race course are concerned with the, with the odour, you know, that you can... They can measure that. I think there is a measurement that can be done and just regular testing just to reassure the community around around the area that um, you know things are under control and there's not contaminated people there. Uh, EPA can test that. The, the, the issue with regards to uh, let's say stagnant water and drainage, uh, that is a issue for council maintenance. Mm -hmm. The the issue with any effluent on site, let's say from the horses, if that is becoming an issue, is something for council to actually monitor. Mm -hmm. And that, that is why uh, noise and odour are conditions within the permit. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we need help to uh, monitor that with regards to implements to, to measure the recordings and whatnot, uh, we would seek EPA's advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Councillor I just have one question, Joel. I'm not sure if you can answer it um, or if I should have asked Cam while he was standing there. Mm -hmm. um, stables are clean morning and night and variously during the day. And as these are stables that horses will live in overnight, I gather, um, I wondered where the waste, sorry, the manure was going to be taken. Do you have any idea on that? We, we don't have an idea on that. Uh, what we have asked for is a waste management plan uh, 
okay. that uh, from the applicant to detail how the waste will be uh, collected, disposed of, and how often. Yep. <coughs> Are there any other questions? I have one just uh, concerning the rising main that Colin brought up. Is that something that, that you have looked at, or is that northeast water? Uh, northeast water. Right. So we have no control over. Uh, not, not on how that's designed. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other questions, the recommendation in 25 parts, which I won't read, <laughs> is uh, on page 37. Would someone like to move that? Councillor Hearn, Councillor uh, Davis. Would you like to speak, Councillor Hearn? Yeah, I'd like to speak. Thank you, Mr Chair. I think this is um, a great um, add-on to our racetrack. Our racetrack has um, a lot of people that use it every single day. This is fantastic to be able to house a trainer on here and I think the fears of the neighbourhood will <coughs> realise that this isn't going to be the problem they think it is. It'll probably just make you notice that your neighbour's horses are smellier than the race track. My experience through the years, um, stable blocks are, in especially the racing fraternity, are spotless. They don't like mess. They don't like rodents. They don't like the manure sitting around. So they're meticulous at what they do. And they have to answer to their, their owners who own the horses that are standing in those boxes. So um, I'm more than happy to pass this and wish, wish the race club luck with it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Councillor Davis. Thank you. Um, <coughs> going on from what Councillor Hearn said, well, it's really good that we do have some objectives because uh, it's showing that people care about their own properties and about the town. So objectives are good. And I think we've covered off on the objectives here tonight. I believe the Benalla Race Club are very responsible people and they will look at look at the... Uh, I don't think council have to get involved because I think the um, the race club themselves are professional people that will, will make sure that everything's spick and span. Uh, tonight on hearing the um, the trainers, they're going to actually work out of there. They're very well-known um, training um, um, brothers, I think they're brothers, um, and um, uh, I'm sure that they're going to uh, want, want to be a great place too. I've only been here 50 years, so I'm not a local yet, not like the Simonses <laughs> or the Stapletons. Um, but, but I think it's um, – I've just seen that race club grow from – it had its hiccups. For a few years, but it just grown from from um, from step to step, from strength to strength, and the local businesses and the people that support it are wonderful. Even though I don't support horses myself, you're laughing there. Um, I think it's great, great for Vanilla. It's great what you've done. You have fenced it. It's um, it's a credit the way it's made and looked after, and I think it's it's, it's becoming part of Vanilla. And I um, I think it's fantastic. And I just wish you luck with it. And and um, and it, it is going to cost a few dollars to put it up, so it's a gutsy effort. I know some of it probably funded from from other sources, but um, <coughs> but I think it's fantastic, and I um, I believe that you'll do a really really good job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Anyone speaking against the motion? Would anyone else like to speak for? Councillor King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, now I'm very happy to support the recommendation, and um, I acknowledge the the. The residents in that area who have put in their concerns and through through the process and um, and looking through the the recommendation uh, that's been presented tonight, I really believe that a lot of those concerns have been raised in the recommendation. They have been um, pointed out, and um, and as Councillor Davis and, and, and the Mayor have said, um, the race club have got a, a great reputation. They've got a great facility. It has grown from strength to strength and. You only had to go out there the other week to see how great it was and how clean it is, and you know they've taken a lot of pride and effort into that facility. And you know, um, I, I believe we'll see that um, in in this next stage of their project. So um, I'm fully supportive of it, and um, and I think that council also have a great relationship with them, and, and we will address any issues along the way. But um, hopefully there are none. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, this is good for now. It's good for our community and. 
five new jobs and $3.1 million for our economy is nothing to sneeze at. So I wish them well and, and I thank the community who have raised concerns and we encourage them to, to talk to council if they um, have further concerns going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. Yes, Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, I'd just like to concur with um, Councillor King over there on what he's just said, but I'd also like to, to just say that um, I think the economic impact for Benalla is terrific. If we do this, um, this extension, this growth to the race club, I mean, that's what we're really needing that will actually help Council to add to the infrastructure that we need for our growing town. So, um, it's, yeah, we need it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Not all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. <coughs> if you don't wish to <coughs> stay, you can quite welcome to leave, Cam and um, Colin. But you're quite welcome to stay if you so wish. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Productive on supporting a horse thing there. Okay. <laughs> Agenda item number three planning and building approvals for August 2022. Welcome, Nilesh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Chair, present to the Planning and Development Committee the monthly planning and building <clears throat> activity report for August 2022. There were 15 applications, two amendments, and three Vic Smart applications decided under delegation. There were two applications and one amendment decided by council. One application was withdrawn, <clears throat> and three notice of decisions were issued out of which council issued two, uh, two of those decisions. There are two matters before the tribunal. Uh, the first one will be heard on in around February 2023. The second one regarding the uh, VIC redevelopment has been broken into two parts. The first part, uh, three parts, sorry. The first part was the practice day hearing, which occurred. The second part was the application by the applicants for an interim enforcement order and the declaration. So that hearing was on last Tuesday and the tribunal's decisions come through. They've disallowed the application for an interim enforcement order. And um, for the enforcement order, they've brought it further into October from the 16th of November hearing <coughs> date to the 13th of October. However, in saying that the, the tribunal has ordered a hearing of joint the enforcement and the declaration on the 13th, however, like I said, as in saying that the applicants have requested that the, they be granted leave, which is they, uh, in sort of normal terms, they be, the enforcement order hearing be cancelled and only the declaration hearing be heard, which is uh, reverting back to the tribunal's first decision, which they said the declaration hearing was scheduled for 16th November. That technically hasn't been issued, so the applicant has requested, we've consented, but that process hasn't been issued by the tribunal. So technically as is, there is a hearing, a joint hearing on the 13th of October. However, both parties have consented to um, the moving of the enforcement, removing of the enforcement order and the hearing of the declaration. So that's uh, where that is at. <coughs> there were um, there were a total of 26 building permits issued. There has been an error in the calculation of the um, total, so it's approximately $3.89 million. And there's a correction in item number 22 of the report, the building report, which is 291,000 rather than 29,000. Be a pretty cheap new dwelling and garage if it was 29,000. <laughs> <laughs> the recommendation is uh, out of the 26 permits, council issued 15. The recommendation is on page 49. 
Happy for any questions. Are there any questions, Councillor King? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, it's just on page 43 under notice of decision. Um, number two, use of land to sell and consume liquor. Where's that? Yeah. The, the, Mr. Chair, that's the Vanilla Golf Club. They have constructed the driving range. And that's all that location. Oh, Follow-up oh, question. So is that a self-serve machine, or <laughs> someone selling it, or you left to Mr. T. You left to order from inside, and it'll be brought. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gannett, no. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nilesh, for the good report. Um, on page forty-one on the table, planning permit applications determined and officer delegation item number twelve, uh, two lot subdivision. Uh, 1.6 Salisbury Street panel. It looks like a unit address. What's the subdivision there? Uh, three, Mr. Chair, I'll get Joe to respond if he can. 1.6 Salisbury Street. I'll take it on notice. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thank you. Um, Nalish, um, bottom of page 42. The multi lot subdivision and creation of an uh, access to transport zone two is that is that where we is that over the cross park or through you, Mr. Chair? That is the large lot subdivision we had um, next to um, at, next to the Delp office, Council of oh, yep. the subdivision. Oh, no, that subdivision there mm -hmm. beyond the truck whisperer. Beyond the truck whisperer. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Councillor Gannaretno. Thank you, Chair. And the building approvals, item six, the radio <coughs> of museum stage two, Main Street, one million dollars. Is that only part of that whole project, or is that the whole project? It's really, Mr. Okay. Chair, that is only stage two, the footings of the um, of the project. So it's a stage development permits through Mr. Chair. Permits can come, building permits can be staged. So this is stage two of the development. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, the recommendation is on page 49 that the report be noted. Move Councillor King, second to Councillor Fern. Councillor King, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to say in the list and go, a great report. Great to see there's still a lot of activity happening. Um, I do note that uh, it looks like we are slowing down a little bit compared to this time last year. So I'm sure you're probably enjoying that little bit of a reprieve, but um, no, it's a great report, a lot happening in town and yeah, keep up the great work. Councillor Hearn. Oh, just to congratulate our, our um, planning um, department on so much work that they do for us each month. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for the recommendation? <coughs> Councillor Gen right now. Thank you, Chair, and I'd like to uh, support the recommendation and go through the report. It's great. Uh, and thank you for the clear explanations of, of all the matters and the answers and great work. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak? Mr. Davis. Thank you. Um, once again, just to follow up on what the council has said, uh, we might have a bit of a reprieve this month, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And when I look at the building permits um, issued by uh, within council compared to private. I mean, we, we're doing a lot of work. So, uh, well done, Alicia, to your team and Joel. And it was interesting tonight when I found out how long it took. Once we see this paperwork come into the, into the council chambers for you to operate on, and then to find out that, that just one single application can take up to two and a half weeks, three weeks of an officer's time. Uh, we don't, I don't really appreciate how much, um, how much you're putting in. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much. Item number four. Um, <clears throat> the Benalla Heritage Stakeholder Engagement Plan. Joel, when you've swapped chairs.
Thank you, Chair. I present the Benella Heritage Stakeholder Engagement Plan for the Benella Rural Sea Heritage Study. The preparation of a heritage study has been identified as a key strategic planning priority as the last heritage study prepared for the municipality was in 1992 and was limited to the city of Benalla settlement boundary. Council has sought and received funding from the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning through the establishment of the regional planning hub to undertake the study. The purpose of this engagement plan is to document the proposed stages in the preparation of the heritage study and anticipate stakeholder engagement throughout the process. It is also intended to raise the rel relative profile and importance of the heritage study in the local government sector. The heritage study will be undertaken in three stages, uh, which is outlined in the report. And the appendix to the report outlines the proposed communication strategy for the heritage study, which is the subject of uh, this discussion tonight. The proposed recommendation is on page 54 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Joel? Councillor Gannaretno. Thank you, Chair. I had a one question, uh, Joel, about this Heritage Advisory Group. Um, how would that group be formed? Is it a group that's formed already, or is that something comes out of this plan? That's something that comes out of this plan. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Councillor O'Brien. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think some of this has been mentioned in your report, Joel, but I'm just wondering, um, please, if you could explain the advantages, disadvantages of having buildings and areas listed as being, as being heritage. The, the advantages are that we're retaining our uh, heritage fabric <coughs> and tenant, so, so the, the retention of old buildings, making sure that they're protected and, and uh, add to the character of the area as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, the disadvantages are the loss of that fabric. If we, uh, once, once something's demolished, it's gone forever, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm. Uh, uh, well, that, that's pretty much what it's all about, is protecting that uh, historical integrity. Just a um, thank you. Um, so having said that, Joel, uh, I just understand from conversations within the community that sometimes people actually don't want to have their house leases listed as heritage because if then they want to do a renovation or sell it, they're not able to do, it's, it's way more complicated. Is that the case? I, yes, and, and I can understand that, yeah, that, that's a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. If you're house is heritage listed, then there are more hoops to jump mm. through with regards to obtaining approval to uh, mainly do alterations to the front facade of the house and uh, generally a couple of rooms back from the front facade. Mm. Um, development to the rear of such sites though uh, can occur, generally can occur. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, the recommendation is that the Vanilla Heritage Study Stakeholders Engagement Plan be adopted on page 54. We have a mover, Councillor Gennaretne, mm -hmm. Councillor O'Brien. So to speak, Councillor Gennaretne. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Joel, for the report. It's a great report and a great study stakeholder engagement plan. Touched uh, a lot of areas you should touch in the town. and. <laughs> well, like the gem when you talk about the heritage, there's a great mix of stories. The migrant camp, the Siwa Singh story, and the European heritage, the museum, uh, all those sort of things. So it's good to have this uh, study done, and it's good to secure the money from the state government to, to do this study and complete the, uh, complete the plan. And uh, I think it's a great recommendation and a good plan to have a heritage advisory group coming out of... Uh, as a result of this study to advise the council and going forward work with the council in the heritage matters. Thank you so much. Uh, the, all the best. Happy to support this and happy to support this going forward. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Joel. I think this is um, really important for all of us here in Vanilla. Um, as Councillor Dunn rightly said, to 
um, acknowledge all of the people, including our Indigenous um, community, who were here first before anybody else, um, with the impact that they have had on our land and on our buildings. So it's, uh, it will be interesting to hear some of the stories that come up in the places that we maybe find out about that we don't know about right now. So, um, yeah, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for the recommendation? If not, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Joel. <coughs> Item number five, the Nala Landfill and Resource Recovery Centre Transfer Station Charges. Adrian Gasparoni, welcome. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, the report presents uh, proposed charges for the Benalla Landfill and Resource Recovery Centre new transfer station. Um, just to recap, the, the Council, with the support of the Victorian Government through the Resource Recovery Infrastructure Fund and the E-Waste Infrastructure Fund, have undertaken a significant transformation to the Resource and Recovery Centre. Uh, the transfer station will allow uh, the community um, to unload uh, waste uh, and recyclables from their vehicles in a safer, easier and cleaner way compared to what they currently do at the tip face. Customers will no longer, uh, as I mentioned, unload waste at the face of the landfill cell. Uh, the main objective of the new waste disposal of the transfer station is to maximise efficiencies and the reduction of uh, the carbon or council's carbon footprint. Uh, in early 2020, council completed the construction of an all-weather accessible undercover structure for e-waste <coughs> and recyclables. Um, other features of that facility will in, uh, ha, uh, include an elevated sawtooth bin arrangement for waste disposal, uh, an integrated sealed road network leading to the new transfer station facility, um, uh, housing of water supply for the site, uh, and a fully integrated solar power system for the transfer station and ancillary buildings. Um, it is important to note that a volume-based fee paying system uh, which will allow the customer to pay upon entry without having to utilise the existing wave bridge as they do currently, which will be solely limited for the use by our commercial customers. Um, the project uh, does address priority actions in the Benalla Rural City Council Waste Management Minimisation Strategy, Northeast Waste and Resource Recovery Implementation Plan uh, 2017 and the Victorian Waste and Resource Recovery Policy Targets. Um, you know, we've heard this on numerous occasions. Uh, unfortunately, the inclement weather continues to frustrate us. And it certainly uh, is another project that uh, has been delayed, uh, which was initially planned to be opening uh, earlier. Um, the new transfer station, however, is a very exciting initiative which will complement Council's objective in minimising our carbon footprint. Uh, the transfer station will allow for more efficient waste disposal and as well as providing an opportunity to segregate our waste <coughs> and provide a good foundation for the introduction of a recyclable shop at some stage in the future. Uh, table one uh, notes the proposed <coughs> domestic waste charges, um, current charges based on weight system. Our new proposed charges, as mentioned, will be based on volume. Uh, these charges will be applicable to the residential customers, our general public, while commercial customers will still utilise our Weybridge. Uh, the new volume-based charges will be calculated per metre cube, regardless of the type of general waste. However, our organic green waste has its own charges. Um, just for interest, we've also included a table um, in, on page 57, table 2, which shows the domestic waste charges compared to our neighbouring councils of Wangaratta and Shepparton. Um, the recommendation uh, is noted on page 59. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Adrian, Councillor King? Thank you, Mr Chair. Adrian, just with regards to the proposed on table one, um, you've got there the lounge furniture and mattresses with no, no changes. Um, I'm assuming going into that into the new way station, they will still have to be dismantled, pulled apart, or are they are they going to hold their mattresses and land suites? I might refer that to Shannon. So yes, currently they get taken away 
event process down in the facility in Melbourne, Dougie and Waste Management. So, yeah, they uh, come on a regular basis, once a fortnight, once a week. Yep. And collect their current, so they'll continue to have messages. Yep. yep. So they've processed and broken down the yep. cycle into yep. Yep. bits and pieces. Yep. Just to follow up, so if a resident at home wants to cut up their own mattress and pull it apart and throw it in their bin and bring it out, mm -hmm. that they'll just be charged a general waste fee. Yes. 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 Correct. 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 So no change yet. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Councillor Davis. Adrian, um, I see the cost per cubic metre. To me, it's a bit scary. It's a bit scary like going from pound, shillings and pence, and I think it was 1966, into dollars. Um, but it is a concern because we've been charging on a weight basis for a long time. Now we're going to a, a cubic or a volume <coughs> um, um, way method of charging. Uh, and it is serious. Um, can we can we work on something like a, what a six by four trailer is at, uh, in a, in a dimensional size to get people into into it, thinking what it's going to cost? If I may, through the chair. So what we will be doing is we'll actually have depicting images at the transfer station to make sure that the 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 community understands how we're charging. So we'll have pictures of. What a full trailer load will look like, and what that's going to generally cost you versus what half a trailer load will look like, and so on and so on. Can I just add, if I may, through the chair, the significant work has been done with Shannon and our finance department in uh, uh, establishing our costs. We currently know how much general waste does come through our uh, the general public and how much volume that occupies in our cell. What we've tried to do is um, compare those uh, volumes to the charges so that the uh, customers wouldn't be necessarily out of pocket to what they get charged now. Thank you. Uh, second question, if I may. Um, <coughs> looking at some of these charges, comparing um, general waste, um, we're proposing to go to 82 in Shepherd and then they're at 60. Um, the question is... Could we look at the ways that they're handling their waste and how they can come up with only charging them the amount of money? Have they got a different waste system to us? Do they have to line their cells? Or If I may through the chair, yeah, their requirements as far as their landfill will be pretty much the same as ours because it's an EPA requirement. Yeah. However, I can't comment on the way that they operate uh, their, their landfill. Um, and whether or not they provide any particular dispensation to their customers compared to what we would. So uh, I, I, I'm very, very confident that their uh, requirements for their cell construction, uh, their management of their landfill would be very, very similar to ours uh, as far as our licence requirements goes. In saying that, they're, they're, their green waste is a lot dearer than ours. So I suppose it balances out. Thank you. Councillor Hearn. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Adrian, just wondered, um, there's only one that sort of confuses me when you look at the proposed charges on Table 1, is the contaminated fill. <coughs> so a tonne of contaminated fill is $132 and the cubic metre is um, $115. Would I be better off buying a truck and taking my contaminated waste in <laughs> tonnage? instead of in a cubic metre? Um, uh, if, if, if I can refer this to Shannon, but as I said to you, mentioned, sorry, if I can through the chair, excuse me. As I mentioned before, Shannon and our finance department have done a significant amount of work in comparing what we currently take um, through our Weybridge and the <coughs> space of volume that occupies in our landfill. So that's how we sort of have developed our charges. But it still would be more expensive for you to, I would suggest, uh, hire a truck to uh, bring your <laughs> contaminated fill compared to um, our new volume-based uh, charges. So, yeah, basically those proposed charges have been worked out on the current weight-based charges. So Vic Waste uh, have a conversion tables of all, all products that would uh, be listed in, into those categories. So then we've calculated on the mean of those products that would be in that category, and that's and, and then uh, used our current charges, and that's how we've come up with the cubic meter charge. So just to follow up, um, 
can I ask Shannon? Um, Shannon, so basically <coughs> um, contaminated fill is a lot heavier, I'm gathering. Yes, is that that's what it is? It's not a size thing. No, it's not a, a size thing. Yeah, it's a weight. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Um, thank you, Adrian. With your crystal ball, would you have, be able to give us any idea when, when the road will be <laughs> serviced and when we'll be able to open this to the public? Because <clears throat> we've been going on for a real long time. If I may, through the chair, look, we, we obviously have to, uh, as per the recommendation, we, 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 we have to um, exhibit the, uh, the, the waste charges for a minimum 28 days. I am hoping the stuff that falls <coughs> out of the sky will eventually stop. Um, we're pretty much, to be fair, we're pretty much done. All our roadworks are ready. We're, we're wanting to seal. So once we seal the roadways, everything else is pretty much lined up, so we're ready to go. Thank you. Adrian, I have one, just a, <coughs> a Dorothy Dix-type question. If I turn up at the landfill with my 6x4 trailer loaded up with broken solar panels, <laughs> what do you charge them at and what do you do with them? If I may, through you, Mr Chair, I'll refer that to Shannon. So, Shannon, I'll let you Yeah, so currently, uh, <coughs> currently there's no recyclable uh, company that uh, services this area, but uh, there's been interest from a few companies uh, in New South Wales and Queensland about possibly starting up operations down down in Victoria and um, yeah, to be able to process. So hopefully in the near future, um, solar panels will be able to be recycled as opposed to just going to the <coughs> what they currently do. So currently what would they be charged at? <coughs> general waste charge, yes. <coughs> and currently they go into the landfill. That's correct. Yep. Thank you. Couldn't you charge them with contaminated? Yeah. <laughs> Is it possible for there's going to be a lot more of these panels coming because yes, they're so, getting green yeah, life. I think it's a bit of a supply and demand thing. So these companies will likely see through through the, the higher demand of, of them now that uh, it will be possible and viable for them to start up operations down down here, be able to collect those. So yeah, hopefully in the near future we'll see something in regards to recycling solar panels. So do you think it's something we should look at? Maybe putting a price on taking solar panels. Rather than uh, talking about general waste? Probably not at this stage until we further know um, yeah, the ins and outs of <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr Chair. And uh, just staying on the um, <coughs> solar panel um, area, do we have enough capacity at the new, um, what are we calling it, the exchange system where people unload? Transfer station. Yep to collect those used solar panels so that they can be collected by the guy in, in New South Wales? Uh, they, yes, might be. The, yeah, the big enough for that. Okay, yes. great. Thank you. Thank you. There's no other questions. The recommendation is on page 59. Move Councillor King, seconded Councillor uh, Hearn. Would you like to speak, Councillor King? Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Why not? Um, very happy to support this recommendation um, and very exciting times coming to Benalla with regards to the transfer station. I was out at the landfill only a couple of weeks ago after a bit of rain and watching people back into the cell and try and unload their trailers and all of that was, was an experience to watch. So I think this is going to just absolutely, yeah, change people's experiences when going out to the, to the landfill to get rid of their rubbish. Um, but yeah, looking at the prices, looking at the work and, the, and hearing about the work that's been done in pulling this together, I think um, Adrian and his team have done a great job yep. in, in getting this to where it is and compared to Wayne Garatta, I think we're sitting pretty good, right in the middle there between Wayne and Shep. Um, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing a good community um, program of advertising around the new transfer station when it comes online so everyone can get out there and dispose of their waste correctly. Thank you, Adrian, and happy to support the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Hearn. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm happy to support the recommendation as well and concur with what Councillor King said, and maybe in the future it won't be just a man's thing going to the landfill. <laughs> yeah, it is. I hate it. <laughs> Anyone speaking against the recommendation? <coughs> Anyone else like to speak for? Davis. I think um, all should be congratulated because we've come a long way with that landfill over the last few years. 
it was a real headache to, early, <clears throat> to the early council and it's been turned around. It's a credit to people being involved in it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, um, it has been a long time coming, as Councillor Davis has just said, but I also think it was great just Shannon making that point about the cost of disposing of the mattress. It's not just that we, as a council, charge people to for them to dump their rubbish, to dump their mattress, but then that mattress needs to be collected, taken to Melbourne, pulled apart, and whatever happens, that's a big deal. So I think that's great to have that explanation for people on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Gannar, right thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to uh, thank Shannon and uh, Adrian for explanations. So that's good. And one thing to highlight is we are changing the method we are charging from per ton to metric uh, to uh, cubic meters. And what we establish in the conversation today is the way people pay or amount people pay is not going to charge. Or this is not a way to grab more money. This is, I think, more sensible way to charge because when it comes to the landfill, what matters is the space, not how much mm. it weighs. So we are going to charge on that and it's a sensible way to go forward and support that recommendation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'd just like to add that I agree with what everyone said. And in most of these cases, we would like to see an increase in money coming into the council, but I think with the landfill, we'd like to see a decrease because mm -hmm. the less waste mm -hmm. that we have to look after, the better for us. So it's a bit of a, a strange um, area where we would rather see less than more. So, and I think that's important that we we strive um, for less waste <coughs> rather than more waste. And uh, the charges I think people will get used to. It's much easier to know that a trailer load is going to cost you X amount rather than weight. So I think they'll know next time to stack as much as they possibly can in their 6x4. <laughs> that doesn't work. Okay. All those in favour? That's carry. And I declare the meeting closed at 7.36. The, 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 the.